In the Da Vinci Code, we are told that more than 80 Gospels were originally considered for the New Testament, but only four were finally included, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These other Gospels are called unaltered, implying that the four Gospels of the New Testament have been altered, and that Constantine in the fourth century commissioned and financed a new Bible, which omitted those Gospels that spoke of Christ's human traits and embellished those Gospels that made him godlike. The Da Vinci Code states that the Bible is a product of man, not God, which has evolved through countless translations, additions, and revisions. Plus, the book states that the Gnostic Gospels and the Dead Sea Scrolls are the earliest Christian records. While these claims appear to deal a devastating blow to Christianity, the truth is that they are declarations of historical fiction and not historical fact. Unfortunately, many in our current culture willingly take these literary inventions as literal truths. Therefore, it is important for us to separate fact from fiction. It should be made clear from the outset that the Dead Sea Scrolls do not contain Christian writings. Instead, they are purely Jewish works consisting of Old Testament books of the Bible, along with Jewish theological and secular writings. The only possible exceptions to this are one small fragment which some believe is from the Gospel of Mark, a fragment called 7Q5, and another fragment called 7Q4, thought to be from 1 Timothy. However, the vast majority of scholars reject this position. If these fragments were from the New Testament, they would testify solidly against the claim of the Da Vinci Code because they would support the Bible and not the Gnostic Gospels. Regardless, none of the Gnostic Gospels are among any of the fragments and manuscripts of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Therefore, the claim that the Dead Sea Scrolls consist of some of the earliest Christian records is historically and factually false. In the second and third centuries, Gnostic teachers produced their own Gospels laced with Gnostic doctrine and understanding. Throughout the history of the Church, we have known of these writings and many who taught Gnosticism. However, we have mostly known them only through those who opposed them through the writings of various Church Fathers and theologians. That changed in 1945 when an Egyptian named Muhammad Ali and his brother went digging for some fertilized soil in the region of Nag Hammadi, Egypt. While digging around a massive stone, they unearthed a jar. When it was opened, 13 leather-bound papyrus books were inside. These manuscripts were the lost gospels of the Gnostics. The manuscripts themselves date to somewhere between 350 and 400 AD and are written in Coptic, an Egyptian language which uses the Greek alphabet. The claim that the Gnostic Gospels are much older than the New Testament Gospels is without historical merit. Manuscripts of the New Testament are in fact older than the manuscripts of the Gnostic Gospels. Today we have manuscripts of the complete New Testament which date to 350 AD, the same date given to the existing manuscripts of the Gnostic Gospels. We also have manuscripts of various books of the New Testament which date to the 2nd and 3rd centuries, and some fragments which may even date to the 1st century. This means that the existing manuscripts of the New Testament are at least 100 to 150 years older than those manuscripts found at Nag Hammadi, and some New Testament manuscripts may even be older than that. Likewise, the claim that the Gnostic Gospels are unaltered is just as false. The Gospel of Mary, Magdalene, which is mentioned in the Da Vinci Code, demonstrates a great deal of textual alteration. This Gnostic text was discovered in 1896, just a little north of Nag Hammadi in Ekmem, Egypt. The manuscript was written in Coptic in the 5th century. It was in excellent condition, except for several pages missing at the beginning. Later, two more fragments of the Gospel of Mary were discovered in Egypt. They were both written in Greek sometime in the 3rd century. When the three manuscripts were compared, there were several differences. This is not unusual, and the same can be said of some New Testament manuscripts. It does show, however, that in the process of time and translation, the Gnostic Gospels have been altered. The Gnostic Gospels themselves contain not only unorthodox doctrines, but several strange teachings. 
Since the Gnostics did not believe in the physical resurrection of Christ, it is not surprising to discover that when the resurrection is discussed, it is referred to as spiritual. One Gnostic manuscript called The Treatise on the Resurrection declares that Christ was transformed into an imperishable aeon. An aeon was a created God found throughout Gnostic theology. It also states that Christ's resurrection was a spiritual resurrection and that the truly wise Christian would understand that it was not a physical resurrection. Therefore, only those with this secret knowledge were considered spiritually mature. Likewise, in the Gospel of Mary, when Mary Magdalene tells her encounter with the resurrected Christ, she states that it was really a vision and therefore not a literal physical account. In the so-called Gospel of Thomas, which consists of several sayings attributed to Jesus Christ, this Gnostic text has Christ making some very unchristlike statements. At one point, Christ advocates killing someone with a sword, which is certainly different from the Jesus presented in the Gospels of the New Testament. The Gospel of Thomas also maintains that women are not worthy of eternal life and must be changed into males. The Gospel of Peter, another Gnostic Gospel, claims that a huge talking cross came from the tomb at Christ's resurrection. One Gnostic text called the Infancy Gospel of Thomas supposedly covers Christ's life as a child where he is credited with causing sickness and even killing some in order to heal and resurrect them. In fact, at one point in this story, Mary, the mother of Jesus, says of her son, Do not let him go outside. Anyone who makes him mad dies. This sounds more like something out of the Twilight Zone than sacred scripture. Contrary to the claim in the Da Vinci Code, the four New Testament Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John existed long before Emperor Constantine in the 4th century. We have manuscripts of these books dating to the 2nd and 3rd centuries, and as has already been mentioned, some fragments from the early 2nd century and some which may even date to the 1st century, around 66 to 68 AD. While it is true that the Gospels of the New Testament show the deity of Christ, stating that He is in fact God who became flesh and dwelt among us, they also show His humanity. In the New Testament, we see Christ weary, hungry, thirsty, sad, angry, and loving, all of which are human qualities. The New Testament does not show Jesus as only God or only human, nor does it depict him as half man and half God. Instead, it shows Christ as the God-man, fully God and yet fully human, God who became man in order to suffer for our sins, pay the price of our redemption, rise from the dead, intercede on our behalf, and one day return and reign as King of Kings. The allegation that the Bible evolved through countless translations, additions, and revisions as presented in the Da Vinci Code and elsewhere among the general public is terribly misleading. It is true that there have been countless translations of the Bible, but this speaks to its importance. The Bible today has been translated into every